Hey everyone, part of SM, welcome to part 2 of Ravel 125th Corvette C6 video build. So, we've got a lot of work to do today. Uh, I've got a lot of footage to fit in this video as well. We're going to start with our suspension, running gear, engine, exhaust, chassis, and move on to our interior, and then the exterior, and we're going to get this finished today. It is Monday evening, I finished this last night. So it was a seven day build from start to finish. So let's crack on and let's get going with the build. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos you now have the chance to support the video content creation by using patreon or the paypal me link in the description down below all the videos will always remain free to watch this is just your chance to help support the videos but leading on from the last part where we dealt with all the bodywork today we're going to deal with the chassis the transmission the running gear all the brakes suspension exhaust system and then move on to our interior and get this thing finished I bought this kit part started, so the previous owner had assembled the transmission and engine block, basically. Sadly, they're not cleaned it up properly, so some of the parts hadn't properly glued together. I have no idea what glue was used, but it wasn't very good because I broke it open using my knife, cleaned up the points, and gave it a re-glue and a clamp together. Lots and lots of parts to clean up. This all on the table here to my right is just all the suspension, engine, running gear, brake, and exhaust system. Lots and lots of parts to clean up. So using various ultimate sanders, we're just going to clean them up nice and gentle until we get them all uh, sprue free uh, and uh, all seam free as well. So just some careful sanding, using various sanders, using our thinny sticks, sponges and our buffer. We'll soon see this all cleaned up. But like I say, quite a lot of work here, but good amount of time doing this as well. We'll be here all day showing every part. Uh, but once that's all cleaned up, we can then start assembling. So we've got all our auxiliary belt pulley system on the front as well well the front part of the engine um it's got the alternator on it various other parts of water pump etc underneath the chassis revels very kindly imprinted the uh, name and the kit and the year it's produced as well so using a trumpeter master tool chisel we're going to take off all that raised lettering and using various thinny sticks from ultimate we are going to sand those nice and smooth in the spray booth, we've got Mr. Service of 1500 Black, thinned about 70% Mr. Leveling Thinner, through our 0.35 Apex at about 18 psi. I'm going to give this a couple of light coats to give it a nice primer base for our paint. Not a bad primer at all. We're enjoying this more and more. Definitely like my lacquers more than anything. A um, couple of thin coats, and then you can put a wetter coat on at the end. It does cover really well. Absolutely stinks to high heaven, though. So if you don't like smelly paint, it's not one for you. Like I said, we just go around, systematically prime all the parts. Most of these are going to be either black or metallic, so they can all be painted in black primer. With the primer drying for a good few hours, probably about six hours, we're here now with some Tamiya TS29 semi-gloss black. I was going to give all the chassis and all the parts that require being black a couple of coats in this. 0.35 Apex, 18 PSI again, just a couple of like coats building it up. Chose the TS29 for one reason and one reason only. I have plenty of it. LP5 is a bit short in supply at the minute, so I thought I'd use this on these larger parts. And then while I was out, I thought I might as well use it for the smaller parts as well. Covers just as well as all the other TS sprays. Goes down really well. Likes a wetter coat, so it does like to go down a little bit wetter than other paints because the self-leveling properties are really good in these paints. Uh, and they like to, like I say, a little bit wetter. As you can see, it's going down quite wet. Like I said, self-level, and you have a really nice uh, semi-gloss black. Probably second in line for the LP5 in semi-gloss blacks. It does leave a good finish, but purely and simply using it today because I have quite a bit of it. And it's cheaper to use this than use the LP5 that's currently hard to find. So a couple of light coats. Covers really well over the black primer. Covers really quickly. So no problem at all. Now we've got a few metallic parts to paint. So we've got some Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Iron. Now I've never used this colour before. So quite interested to see how it went. So we've got some of the Mr. Hobby Rapid Thinner which is a lot more beneficial with the metallics. Dries quicker uh, and leaves the metallic flakes at the top of the surface rather than allowing them to sink, and that way you'll get a much better metallic effect. So chose this to do for the brakes and the exhaust system, and what a wonderful colour it is. Absolutely beautiful colour. 
The Mr. Hobby um, Super Metallics are absolutely stunning paints. And this is definitely one that doesn't disappoint, especially the exhaust. Really nice colour with the exhaust system. A really nice tone of paint. Covers really well. Again, though, because it's thinned with the levelling type or Mr. Hobby thinners, they do absolutely stink. So you need a good spray booth and or respirator as well. 0.35 Apex. Sorry, 0.2 Apex on this one. My bad. And we're 18 PSI again. And again, just a few light coats. Build it up. Put it down. Come back five minutes time. Give them the light coat. And we'll end up with an absolutely fabulous metallic effect. Do the manifold the same colour as well. We'll give all this a wash later on to add a bit of depth to it. Uh, but for now, just get all these painted in the stainless, uh, sorry, the iron colour. So TS17 now. Uh, one of the very nice aluminium colours from the TS range of Tamiya's. And again, a couple of light coats, build it up with a wetter coat at the end. And as you can see, you get an absolutely fantastic metallic finish. So this called out for an aluminium colour, so this will do me absolutely perfect. Again, these are already pre-thinned in the bottle, as you can see on the right. Uh, I basically decant a load, thin a load, and it's always there to use. You don't have to thin a little bit at a time. Covers really well. Again, likes a wetter coat, so don't be afraid to put it on quite thick. I don't mean hose it on, but you can put it on a little bit thicker than you think, and the coverage is fantastic. Now the wheels, compliment, well, I thought about stripping these, very nearly put them in bleach, and I thought, you know what, let's try the trick of some semi-gloss. Pop it over the top, see what it looks like, and see if I'm happy with it. And I tested it on that one wheel, thought it looked great. So we've got some Mist Hobby um, clear semi-gloss uh, here, and it just goes down absolutely perfect. 0.35 Apex, 18 PSI. A couple of light coats, takes that high shine off the chrome, and just leaves around a really nice chrome colour for us. Now the rear wheels are held on by a metal axle, the front ones are held on by these metal pins you can see me here, they're held in by that little hub that then fits in on the back of the wheel. And what I'm doing here, I'm just testing the ride height because I lowered the car, remember, in the last episode, uh, and I'm just testing it to see how it's sitting on the chassis uh, with the body working and so on, just a quick test fit. So we put a bit of super glue on the back, we grab the back of this. Pop it in place like so, let it dry, repeat that for the other two. And I did notice when putting the wheels in, they were a tight fit. And that's probably so that when you fit the wheels, it holds them on. I was going to glue this in place, so I wasn't too bothered. So I just widened the hole a touch. Uh, and that allowed us to get the wheels in much, much easier. So just popping it in, having a look. It seems to be sitting quite well. So more than happy with that. So we can crack on now. And then we're on to the uh, interior. So we've got the main... Uh, cockpit tub I call them but I suppose it's the interior tub it's got some nice engine detail on the front of it as well uh, and nice texture to the floor as well but it doesn't bother us because we are going to flock ours later on again a few parts to clean up tricky but not too many on this bit um, but we need to pay attention to our colour scheme asked around for a few different colours Dan Croak gave me a great suggestion and that's what we're going to go with later on with all the metallic parts dry I thought we'd give these uh, calipers a paint Looked at various colours and decided on red in the end. Thought it was probably the best colour um, to go and contrast next to that body colour. So I have here, and I've absolutely no idea what colour it is. It's a TS spray. Um, I don't know which one it is. It'll either be TS8 or TS49. But I haven't marked the bottle foolishly. I've not marked the bottle. Um, but we just need a bright red, so that'll do perfectly for our calipers. Very unusual for me not to mark it, but I have. So we have to guess what colour this is. Um, and if we need it down the line, again, we have to guess where it is. As you can see, several light coats, building it up slowly. Don't put it on too thick as you'll flood it and uh, it'll run under the masking tape. But beautiful red calipers, and more than happy with those. So again, one last coat. Have a good look. Make sure you've got even coverage all around. Nice and glossy as well. Uh, so these are going to look great behind those five-spoke wheels. So like I say, the TS sprays, absolutely love them. They cover fantastic, great range of colours. And they just spray absolutely fantastic. So we've got some decals for the top of the engine covers. A bit tricky, and they did kind of fall apart on me a little bit. Uh, but very awkwardly got them in place. Like so. Just position them in place, get rid of all the moisture, hit it with the decal solution. This was the UMP normal, and then I hit them with the strong later on. And there's both sides to do on that. We've got this intake here. So I have just painted the hose section in Ravel Aquacolor Gloss Black. Uh, what's going to go with a 
rubber color, but looking online, it looks to be quite a shiny black. So decided to go for that color instead. No, you haven't got, oh, there we go. It's back. There we are. I was going to say, you're not seeing double. Um, the camera is playing up a little bit at the minute, um, but we're back in focus now. Uh, paint up suspension struts as well. The shock absorber struts in gloss black as well. And then a little bit of Vallejo model color black to do our coil packs. Well, I assume the coil packs on the top. Um, just go around, carefully brush paint these in place, like so. And I'll repeat that for the other side as well. Just some careful, steady painting. If you do muck up, if you get one of these pointed cotton fudge, you can see just below my hand, you can wipe off any excess and kind of start again. Uh, putting acrylic over lacquer, you can get the acrylic off, water-based acrylic really easily, no problems at all. But just take your time here, well worth just slowing down. Um, you're not going to see this part really, to be honest, because it's going to be hidden under those engine covers. But it is what it is. And the starter motor, I've painted black as well as the oil filter too. While we've got the black out, I'm going to do the center of the brake discs as well. Just very carefully brush paint them until uh, you've got all the centers covered. Repeat that for all four of them. I'm trying to speed up today and cut down the, uh, the amount of time. Um, I've got a lot to get through, so if I don't hang around, bear with me. Uh, I've moved on because you've all seen me paint brake discs before, so you don't need to see it again. Uh, if you do, go back to the Technique series on the Subaru, and you can see everything in depth on that. Now, on this, um, I assume, I don't know what it is. Is it a throttle body? I can't tell what it is. I'm not too up to speed on these engines. But some show the center of this being black, and some are silver. So I decided to go for silver for a little bit of visual interest. So we're brush painting some the lower model air silver on. Just with a Tamiya flat brush. Again, nice light coat. Just take our time, build it up. Until we're happy we've got coverage all over. And then there we go. There's all our running gear ready for assembly. All it needs to do is assembling, and then we can give it a wash and uh, give it a bit of depth to those metallic parts. So starting off with our engine, we've got our covers on with the coil packs, and then there's this cover um, that sits in the middle. I don't know what this is. Is it an intake? Um, it must be. It must be the, uh, the intake manifold, is it? And then that cover sits on the side there. But obviously, you decal these. So be careful handling them because we didn't seal them in. A little dab of CA glue. Hold those in place nicely. And then we can do to the side. They are handed and they do, do go a particular way. So pay attention to which way they go. And then a little bit of glue on the front here. And we get all the auxiliary drive belts in place. They do go in a specific way, like so. Don't drop it and drop it on the table. And if you do pick parts of this, make sure you've got no glue on your fingers. It's very easy to get glue off these parts and start to ruin all your hard work. So just take your time and make sure everything's in the right place. Then we've got anti-roll bar on our subframe. Glued in place. A bit tricky to get in these. The front one wasn't that bad. The back one was particularly difficult to get in. And then according to instructions, we pop our engine on here as well. So again, a couple of dabs of CA glue. Using my Loctite glue here. And we pop our engine on in place. Hold it for a second or two. And there we go. And then a couple of dabs of CA glue on the chassis itself where this is going to sit. And we can thread the transmission through. And get the front subframe on as well. So push it fully home. There's four locating points. They're quite positive as well. They do the firm push. And once it's all in, you can leave that to one side to dry for a minute. And then the rear subframe as well. This anti roll bar is very tricky to do. There's no real locating point right on the front, but the edges, the very sides, click into place on the top. So a bit tricky to do, but not that bad. And again, pop it in place. Now I do wrongly put this in place here, as you'll see. So I've glued that in place now, and then I realized, oh, the exhaust. So I took it back off. A couple of dabs of CA glue, because this thing fits under that subframe. And then the back boxes stick on the back like so. They push through the reverse side. And there we go, just click in. All good. And then our subframe can go back in where we had it originally. Now, because we've lowered this, the hubs don't exactly meet the subframe, but you can't really see it, and it has no detrimental effect at all to the fitment. Now, unusually for a Rebel kit, it comes with metal exhaust tips. This is a nice touch. 
a couple of dabs of Sega on all the little points and just line them up, pop them on, make sure they're straight. And there we go. Nice touch to get and a nice addition to the back of the car as well. They do look really good. Nice turn metal. Highly polished as well. Nice touch. Then our brakes. So our brake calipers and discs are all handed. Uh, the backs face the front and the fronts face the back. Does that make sense? Hang on. The backs face the front and the fronts face the back. Um, so make sure you get the right ones. The bigger ones go on the front. And uh, they do locate in one particular way. There's like a, a shaped lug where they fit in. And then a wash. We've got some Tamiya black panel line wash. And I'm just going to go round. And if it's silver and it can hold a wash, I'm going to put a wash in it. We'll let it dry, come back later on, and remove all the excess wash. And this just adds a surprising amount of depth to the model. Makes it look a lot more interesting and a lot less monotone. Uh, and it is really a step well worth doing. Um, so just go around, take your time, uh, let it dry, and then come back with a moistened cotton bud with some odorless mineral spirits, as you can see here. My Santa doors on the bench. And just gently go around. Be careful and break this. I have had it take the paint off before, especially if you brush paint this. So be very careful. If you go around, remove as much of wash as you can. It'll leave all that nice black wash in all the recessed areas. It just adds a real nice amount of depth to the model. And it just brings it to life a little bit. Rather than just being sterile and boring, it can just add a depth of touch, well, a touch of depth to the model. So you don't need to go mad. Just go around. If you put any excess on, wipe it off. Need any more Sansador, add it. Wheels are dry now. Uh, we've got our tyres on. And I'm just adding the road wheel nuts. So we've got some... Tamiya uh, LP60, I think it's 61. It is metallic grey with a toothpick. I'm just going to add the row wheel nuts like so. I'll repeat that for all four of them um, as well. No trouble. Or just be very careful. Take your time going around. You don't want to get it on any areas where you don't want it. So just take your time. And again, it just adds a little bit of depth. When you look at the wheel, you can see the nuts separately. And it does look good. And each wheel does have a, a decal on a Chevrolet logo. So again, pops in the middle. There is a raised um, logo as well. So just place this on top, remove all the moisture, and hit it with your decal solutions. Standard process for normal decal. There we go. And again, just a quick test fit. Popping the wheels in place. Popping the body on, see what the engine looks like. That's looking good. Nice engine bay on this one. It really is quite a nice, busy engine bay. Looks really good. Speaking of which, we're going to paint that in Mr. Surfacer. Black again. And that will be our colour. And what I plan to do later is dry brush it. Add a bit of detail um, to all the detail parts under there. Rather than sitting there trying to pick it all out and trying to be neat, I thought we'll dry brush it with a little bit of grey and that should add a little bit of depth to it already. Um, to the already nice detail that's there. So... We're going to paint this up, let this dry, and we can mask it up and prime the back of the interior as well. We're going to flock this, like I say. Already picked my interior colour. Very good suggestion from Dan Croak. And uh, while we're at it, we'll as well prime all the interior parts as well. Really, really nice front seats in these. Uh, real nice texture to them. A nice shape. They just look really good. And these are a very prominent part of the interior, which we'll see through the target top. So... Worth taking your time here, so just some careful priming with Tamiya Grey Surface Primer through the Ultimate Apex, 18 PSI, 0.35 needle as per usual. Um, and yeah, there we go. Build it up, great primer, builds up really well, dries really fast, just the only downside, as usual with lacquer, they absolutely stink, and these do stink absolutely horrendous. I've got my booth on, I've got a respirator on, and uh, yeah, they really do smell, but they do a good job. As you can see, covers really quick. We're putting grey on grey, so coverage is really fast. And yeah, so let those parts dry. While waiting for those, we're going to mask off this uh, engine bay. We painted it all black. Some careful masking with some Tamiya tape until we're happy it's all masked up. Then we get the rest of it done. And then we can do the center console as well. So this is going to be left in black. Then we're going to prime all the interior and spray it in our body colour. And that will leave the centre console black and all our engine bay as well. So there we go. All primed up. We've left it overnight and we're here the next day and we've got zero paint Ferrari beige paint. So Dan Croak sent me a picture of an interior. It was pretty much kind of like this colour and I thought perfect. That's what we'll do. It's going to be a two-tone interior, black and this beige. And uh, hopefully it's going to look good. The seats are absolutely fantastic. Um, these are going to look great once they're painted up. 
like I say, a couple of light coats, probably three light coats of this. In total, don't go too mad, it will craze the paint. But just build it up. As you see, the interior, actual main part is done. Absolutely lovely colour. Just a final coat on the seat. And there we go. There's our beige leather all done. Quick final blow over of the main interior part. As you can see, it covers really well. You can't go mad. If you go a bit crazy, it gets a bit hot and it can melt the plastic. So just take your time. Build it up. Several layers. Thin layers is better than one thick. And there we go. There's a colour. Lovely colour. Happy with this. Good choice by Dan. So, yeah, well done, Dan. Your name's been mentioned about 40 times in this video. So go and subscribe to the Dan Cave, my buddy Dan Croak, and uh, show some love his way as well. So, like I said, we're going to do two-tone interior, black and beige. So we need to mask up and spray our black. So there we go. I'm going to super skip right to the end of all this masking because it's immensely boring. And there we go. We're going to mask up both door panels and the lower dash as well. So all the lower dash will be beige, all the upper dash will be black, um, as well as the center console part as well. Like I said, we're going to dry brush this. So I've got some gray paint, some Tamiya LP gray. I've loaded up the brush, wiped off as much of the paint as I possibly can. I've got a Vallejo dry brush, but a small flat brush will do the job just as well. And all you got to do is back and forth motions over all the raised parts, and this will highlight those with lighter parts. And just add a little bit of detail. There's something that's probably a bit monotone and a bit boring. Dashboard's done. We've got our instrument panel in. Did lose the footage to this. Do apologize. Very nearly lost the part as well. But it's basically a clear part with a decal behind it. And it just sticks on. Nice touch. Looks really good. And then all our door cards and dashboard are painted. We've got a few decals to pop in place on each door card. Three in total. There we go. There's the last one. Again, as usual, set in place with UMP decal solutions. And then we're going to give our seats a wash. Now, I've mixed a bit of black with grey, so we get a dark grey. My original thought was to just do the panels, so not the actual centres of the seat, but the main panels on the seat instead. I had a little bit of wash go a little bit awry, and I thought, oh, well, let's do the whole lot now. And I'm glad I did, because it added a real nice depth to the seat. Um, so you can see that I'm just trying to do these panels. That was the plan. But a little bit of wash crept over, as it always does. And I thought, you know what, let's just do the whole thing. And I'm glad it did. It came out really well. You'll see it in a minute. It just added a nice bit of depth and a bit of life to the seat. So there we go. There's all the panels done. And right about now, I'm thinking, do you know what? Let's just do the whole center of the seat as well. Loads of recessed detail in the center of that seat. And this is going to hold the wash really well. So I thought, right, let's just do it and let's see what happens. At this point, I was kind of thinking I might regret this. I was like, uh-oh, what have I done? I've ruined everything. Um, but no, it turned out really well. And as you'll see in a second, the seats look really good with the washing. So with this wash, it's enamel-based. Just leave for 20, 30 minutes, come back, remove all the excess, and you're left with a, a seat like this. And as you can see, it's added a real nice depth to the center of the seat and obviously all the panel lines as well. And uh, yeah, they look great. I'm happy I did that now. So just go around with a cotton board, clean it all up, and get a piece of clean pitch kitchen paper and just go around and wipe off any excess. Okay, we also removed the excess wash from the door cards as well. And again, just adds a little bit of depth to them, makes them look a bit more natural and not so monotone. Uh, and again, worthy step to do. Glad I did this now. It looks really good. So with some dabs of Loctite Perfect Pen or Precision Pen, whatever the heck it's called, I always forget. Um, we've got our door cards to pop in place. So just pop them in and you can wipe off any excess glue later on. A really nice interior on this. I didn't really realize at this point, but it is really nice. Gear stick in place, handbrakes going in. My girlfriend Hannah, who's been doing all my flocking lately, because if not, it goes everywhere in the cave, has flocked this in a beige uh, scale production flock. And luckily, it's a slightly different tone than the rest that was sprayed. So it just adds another nice detail to the uh, interior. A little bit of sagal at the front of the seat, a little bit on the back. Locate it in place, push it down. Great, and then we repeat that through the seat as well. These Loctite Perfect pens um, and craft pens, whatever they change their names to, really good. Love the sagal, works really well. And then the other seat, pop it in place as well. Like I said, the contrast between the colour we've sprayed and the carpet colour, the flocking, Looks great. It looks really natural. And uh, yeah, nice interior of this. It's going to look really well. So we're going to 
glue our interior tub to our chassis now. You know, put a little bit of glue at the front on these rails, a little bit of glue at the back, and then glue it in place. Didn't need a bit of persuasion, a little bit of kicker. Had to hold it and give it a bit of kicker to hold it in place, but real positive fit. Fit around the engine really well. A few decals had to the engine bay as well. Um, mostly like warning labels, placards, a few covers for the uh, fluid reservoirs, the brake uh, expansion, so the brake fluid uh, and the expansion chamber for the water as well. And again, some careful applications, some careful decal solutions. And there we go, there's our interior done. Look at that, I think it looks great. The carpet looks good, seats look great, dashboard looks good. Happy with this one, nice interior, and this is going to be really visible on show. So happy it turned out well. Now the glass, um, I was skeptical about this because the kit was going so well. I thought there's got to be something wrong with this kit. The glass isn't going to fit, but I was pleasantly surprised. So we cut off our sprue cutters, some very, very gentle sanding with a thinning stick. Be careful you don't hold a glass like this, so you don't get fingerprints. You are putting stress on the edge, very easy to snap. So very, very light pressure. Uh, don't be too aggressive with it and just take your time cleaning it up. And there we go. The rear piece fits in perfect. Absolutely perfect. No problems there at all. As you can see, just literally pops in place. So some PVA glue will hold that in later. No problem at all. And even the front one, you have to slot it under a little bit. So I haven't figured that out yet. I'm about to now. There we go. Slot under the bottom, fits into the top. A little bit of CA glue, hold it for a minute, and that'll be just fine. And again, quick test fit with the bonnet or hood, and that fits on perfect as well. So, no mass set for the windows, unfortunately. So, we're going to mass this using our two, uh, one, two, and three mil Tamiya tape. I didn't fill it with the six, 10, and 18. So, we're just going to carefully go around till we get it all mass using the uh, demarcation on the glass where it goes frosted. Let's get as close to it as we possibly can. And then cut it off as and when needed, and then button the other piece up to it. Infill the centers, repeat for the uh, the front as well. Or the back, rather. There we go, the front. And there we go, both done. A little bit of white tack in the middle. Don't apply too much pressure because it's so easy to break this glass. Uh, one of my crocodile clip holders. And there we go, that's ready to paint. While we're here, might as well paint our sun visors as well, which we will have to do later on because it does wear off a little bit. So, did contemplate masking this, and I thought, you know what, it's not worth masking. Some Vallejo model colour black, thinned with a drop of water, nice big Tamiya flat brush, as little strokes as we can over the paint. Let's make sure we get it nicely covered. And there we go, there's our sun visors done in a different colour to the frame. So let's take your time. Don't forget to do underneath, the sides. Make sure you get everywhere covered properly. And there we go. So much simpler job than masking it. Lights. Now, we've got lights on the front and back of this. We've got the main headlights, some fog lights, driving lights. And I'm going to guess they are reverse lights on the back. So they've been cut off and cleaned up. We've got our Edin marker here. And we're going to edge all the plastic light parts. This will give the impression of rubber when we install them. And again, adds a bit of depth to the model. Won't see it as much on this because of the colour of the car, but I always do it as, well, just part of the course, really. So it'll be done on this one. And the same on all the other lights as well. They all get an edge in. And when you go in place, it just looks like the rubber seal that's naturally around a light. So any marker pen will do, a Sharpie, whatever you've got. As long as it dries quick, just some careful... Running around the edge, we'll do that just fine. And there we go. Right, so couldn't pull on get any more. We need to flat the body. So I've got some 8,000 micro mesh and 12,000. Great 2K job on this. A little bit of dust on this back end here. A couple of spots on the bonnet. But other than that, we're just going to run around, flat it all, and polish it up. Really nice polish job on this one. Really quick and simple because the 2K was just so good out the gun. Uh, do I attribute that to the 0.2 needle? I think we will do. I think it's definitely... Saved a lot of overspray off the 2K, and I think it's something I'll definitely be using again in the future. So once you hit it with the 8,000, dry it off. We've got 12,000 there in my hand. I'm just going to go round and smooth it all off. Be very careful, as I always say, around leading edges or raised areas because the paint's always thinner on the edges. So just take your time. Don't go mad, and try to only sand in one direction if you can. 
keep stopping and checking to see if it needs any more. Once you're happy, move on to the rest and get that done. Dry it off at the end. Have a good look. Have you got rid of all the dust spots or all the imperfections gone? There was very little in this, so it was such an easy clean up, this one. Very quick. Then we come with the UOP polish system. So we've got our compound first on a clean piece of uh, T-shirt. And we've got to go around and just polish it all up. So the compound's an aggressive polish. So this will get rid of all the micro scratches that we've introduced with the sandpaper. And then once we put this on, circular motions, we can come back, wipe it off. And then we come back with polish and give it a final buff up. So this makes a huge difference. Although we had a great 2K job in the first place, this will just enhance the shine, just like you do on your real full-size car. Um, it just adds depth to the paintwork and gives it a real nice shine. But you do need to be very careful you don't burn through any edges or damage anything. So just take your time, be gentle, don't be over-aggressive. And uh, yeah, you'll do just fine. It'll be a really nice polished job on the car. As I say, really lucky with this one. It didn't need a lot, so very happy about that. Uh, quick compound on the po uh, bonnet as well. We had to do quite a bit of heavy sanding. And then a quick buff up with a clean piece of t-shirt. So I have four pieces of t-shirt. One to put the compound on, one to take it off. One to put the polish on, one to take it off as well. That way, you know you're always getting a clean bit of t-shirt and a clean surface as well. Polish now, start with the bonnet because we already had it in our hand. So again, this is a less abrasive than the compound. And this will give us our higher shine at the end. So just some gentle rubbing. Be careful of all the edges. Don't go too rough. And then wipe it off and buff it up with a clean piece of cloth like so. Nice call this. I'm on the fence because the pigments are quite big. But somebody said today it enhances the colour. I think it does a little bit. I think it gives it a little bit of sparkle. Whether it's the right scale or not, that's up to you to decide. But I think it looks alright. I'm happy with the colour. It is the colour I envisaged. Uh, just maybe a more solid colour and not as metallic. But yeah, once we've buffed all this up, we've got a nice shine there. Most of the dust spots have gone. And we can move on to the main body now. So again, just be careful. Same motions as with the compound. Obviously, this is a bit less aggressive, so you don't need to worry about burning through as much, but you still need to be very wary. So be careful on the edges. Don't sand them as much. And be careful that you're not snagging anywhere with the T-shirt or your cloth, because uh, you'd be surprised just how easy it is to burn through paint. It can be very thin on edges, and it can catch you out, and it will catch you out at some point. So... I'm very, very careful, and as I always say, I'd rather leave a slight floor in than ruin my complete paint job. So, yeah, does a good job. Our polish system works really well. All my cars for the last whew, over a year have been done with this, probably longer now, and they all just look absolutely fabulous, all polished up. And there we go. So we do all the sides, the tops, the boot, all around the front and rear bumpers. And again, clean bit of cloth, wipe it all off, give it a good buff to a nice high shine. Worked really well. So yeah, I like the colour. I do think it looks good. It suits this car. It's the colour I kind of saw. Probably a bit sacrilege for a Ford colour on a Chevy, but hey, it is what it is. Some people won't agree with that, but I chose the colour. I had the colour on my shelf, so that's the reason I chose it, really. But it's coming up really well. Really good. One final buff up. And there we are. Have a look for any places you've missed, any excess polish. If you do have any excess polish, you can come with an old toothbrush and just give it a scrub out. It'll mostly be in panel lines and what have you. So just get your toothbrush in there and clean it up. Now, the windscreen, I bought some Bob Smith's Gold, which is the odorless non-fogging super glue, a few weeks back. And I thought, you know what, let's give it a whirl. So applied a generous amount, not overly, just enough in the screen surround that should grab uh, the windscreen. All round equally. I'm just going to pop this in. It's held really well at the bottom. It's going to need no pressure at the bottom. But that pressure does push it out of the top a touch. So we'll have to give it a few minutes of pressure at the top just to hold it in place. But it's a lot cleaner using normal super glue, which would haze the glass. And PVA glue, I don't think PVA glue would be strong enough to hold this. Because there's quite a bit of pressure on the bottom. So yeah, it's just some careful glue. Be careful of any cocktail sticks. Be careful of any glue on your fingers here because it can cause such a mess on nice freshly painted bodywork and then slot the glass in like so i've wiped the glass down with um a glasses cleaning cloth and obviously when we masked it we painted it with mr surface of black and there we go fits in place absolutely perfect 
what I'm going to do is going to give a good bit of pressure here for a couple of minutes until it holds it. Just checking there's no glue splurging out underneath, which is not. And there we go. There's the front one in place. Now, the back one has no pressure on it whatsoever. It literally just sits down. So I thought for ease, I'll use a PVA-based glue. We don't need any pressure here. We don't need any mucking around. So we can just pop in some blobs of PVA, put the screen on, wipe off any excess, job done. Nice and simple, mess-free. This is glue and glaze uh, from Deluxe Materials. As you can see, pop the glass in. It's the best fit in the world. This really fits in well. Any excess PV glue that comes off, don't lick the cotton bud like I just did. I just wipe off any excess. Don't lick the other side like I just did. Just wipe off any excess glue. And gravity alone, the pressure alone of gravity will glue that in place over a few hours. Now we've got some pre-chrome parts for the lights. These are handed, so make sure you get the right side. They just push in, they don't need gluing in at all, and they project out the front as well. And a bit of glue and glaze on those light fittings we uh, sanded and uh, put the marker pin around earlier on. Just some of our BSI gold odorless glue. And again, be very positive here putting it in. Don't be nervous, because if you are, you'll pop it in, it'll fall out or drag Sega all down the body. Just be positive and putting it in place, get it lined up. I pop it in place very quick. I think I've just seen a little bit of excess glue. So I'm just going to wipe it off the front like so. There we go. And we got our light. And we're going to line it up and then just plonk it straight in like so. No mucking about. There we go. Hold it for a second or two. This say glue, while it doesn't fog, it does take a little bit longer to get a hold of parts. So there we go. And then repeat that for the other side as well. Job done there. And then we've got our little lights at the bottom as well. So we've got some silver uh, parts out of the kit. So they have been test fitted and glued in place. So one side's just tested. There we go. That's the right side. And a little bit of UV glue around the, each side. Hit it with the UV light. That will glue it in place. There's several different glues in play here for all different reasons. Uh, the UV glue is non-permanent, so you can get it out should you need. We don't need an aggressive glue underneath because there's no real pressure on this part, so this will hold it enough. We use the Bod Smiths on the front screen because of a bit of pressure, and we use the PV on the back because it just fitted in place. And again, the rear light lens are painted inside the light silver. Hit it with the UV pen, hit it with the UV light, it dries. Again, no pressure needed, just sits in place. The UV glue will hold it, and we get no risk of any fogging off our glues. Okay, time to make the chassis to the body. Always a nerve-wracking part, but I've test fitted this that many times. I know it fits okay. So you need to pop that little bit out there. There we go. Look at that interior colour on that body. Absolutely brilliant choice. Really is. Thank you, Dan. That's about the fifth time I've mentioned your name today. But well, thank you, buddy. Alan got all the credit last time. You were getting it this time. And there we go. The exhaust tip's looking great. Our rear light's looking good. The lower rear lights, I think the reverse lights, are looking good. Just line it all up. We've got a little bit of CA glue on that back piece there just to hold it in place. So a couple of dabs of the Loctite pen glue. Push it down, hold it together. Just keep hold of it for a second or two. Let the glue grab it. And then our wing mirrors. A little BSI glue in there. Pre-chrome parts out the glue. Wipe any excess off that you need to. I might have actually used glue and glaze in those. This is the BSI. So this is the other super glue. A couple of dabs in there. Now, a little tip here, glue on the car. I put a little bit of accelerator on the actual pin piece of the mirror that goes in. So as soon as I get it in place, it will glue straight away. So line it up, get it in, hold it. Boom, there we go. Job done. Nice and simple, nice and easy. And we're getting to the end now. Now, this rear light, I've looked at several pictures. Some show this being completely blacked out. Some show, some show it don't. Some show it half blacked out. I decided, you know what? It's going on red. I quite like it like this. So this is my choice. So if it's wrong, shoot me. It's one of those things. And then the final touch on the back of the car is the number plate. So I chose the um, Corvette like dealership plate, I suppose it is, wherever it is, show plate. Uh, just pop it in place, remove all the excess. And there we go. Settled down really nice. Really do like Rebel decals. Rebel Germany decals uh, and Rebel USA can be really good kit uh, decals. So never really have a problem with these. They're normally pretty good. And there we go. Get rid of all the excess water. 
And there we are. So the the interior sun uh, visors, they get, they get a little bit damaged. I'm going to give them another quick coat. Water-based paint is quite delicate. And I think I caught it when polishing. So lesson learned, leave it till the end. But another quick coat of the uh, model color black soon covers that up well. And there we go. Not looking bad at all. Two brushes there, a little bit of excess uh, polish. Ride height's quite good. Happy with the front. The back probably going to be in a smidge lower, but I think the axles brought it down a bit uh, because it slots through the gearbox. I think although I lowered it, I think that's brought it down a bit. But it looks good. I'm happy with it. The interior colour looks fantastic. The flocking looks absolutely brilliant. Hannah's getting really good at flocking. I'll give her that. Uh, the colour looks great. Those exhaust tips are a really nice touch. Just a great looking car. Probably one of the only Corvettes I actually like this of the newer style. I think it's a great looking car, but I really love that interior colour. The body colour looks absolutely great. Wheels look good. Engine bay looks really decent for a kit part. Uh, it's nice and busy. Dry brushing looks good. Engine detail is not too bad. But I just love that interior. I think it looks absolutely brilliant. Contrasting against the dark metallic colour of the body. And yeah, very happy with this. Underneath, looking good as well. Like I say, those door tips look fantastic, as do those iconic tail lights as well. So this is today now. This is the final day. With everything set and dry, we've got some ultimate uh, spray shine on another clean piece of t-shirt. And all I'm going to do is spray a little bit on here, not on the car. You need a little bit, and this will do the entire car. All you do is rub it on. It's just a clear liquid. It will dry to a haze and then you buff it off. Be careful of the bonnet being loose. Just rub it on, let it dry to a haze, buff it off, and it just adds an absolutely beautiful shine to the body. It's a final touch I always do. And uh, it always looks pretty good. So just take your time. Be very wary now of knocking parts off. Wing mirrors, lights and that are quite easy to knock off. The, the T-shirt can snag it. So just take your time until they're all nicely polished up. Right then, so it's done. So we primed this in Tamiya Grey Surface Primer, painted it in Z uh, Gravity uh, Spain Ford Magnetic Grey. We gave it a black panel line wash. We painted all our lights on. Um, we cleared it in Gravity uh, Colors 2K Clear as usual. That was left to dry. We flatted it with Micro Mesh, polished up with the UMP polish system. The wheels were left in the kit chrome. We just gave them a semi gloss coat. Uh, and all the interior was flocked in scale production uh, beige flock and the seats and everything were painted in zero paints uh, Ferrari beige interior color Then throughout the rest of the vehicle. It was a mixture of TS and LP Tamiya paints um, And that's it really what a great kit this was to build um, Definitely one of the best revel kits. I'm probably one of the best kits full stop I've built I'm glad I lowered it because this thing would have ridden really high. When you consider I've lowered the back a good couple of mil and the front quite a bit as well, this would have rode really high. But no real negatives with the kit at all. The target top didn't really fit very well, which is why I left it off. But I think with a little bit of work, we could have got it to fit. But I like it like this. Really shows that interior up well, which looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, my girlfriend, Hannah, yeah, she does all the flocking because it saves the mess in here. And she did a great job. Engine looks good. Again, could be better. Always could be. But for a kit out of the box engine, it turned out pretty well. And here is. The only bugbear I've got is probably the metallic flakes on the paint are a little bit big. But I kind of like it in some weird way. I think it kind of gives the car a nice effect. It's a great colour. Great looking car. And I'm glad I lowered it because it gives it a much nicer stance. And there we go. So... Happy this build's done. It was a wonderful kit to build. Let's go back to me for some final thoughts. Okay, there we go then. So, happy with that one. That was a real mojo builder. That was an absolutely fantastic kit to build. No real issues with the kit whatsoever. Everything about it was enjoyable. Um, it definitely needs a lower note. 100% it will ride way too high if you build it. But just what a great kit to build. Definitely up there. As I said... One of the best Revel, if not one of the best kits I've built ever. Absolutely just phenomenal kit. Good looking car. The pigments were big on the colour. I do admit that myself, but I do kind of like them as well. So I am happy with the colour. Um, and just, again, I can't say enough about the kit. Absolutely fantastic. If you can get one of these to build, 
go and get it you will enjoy it and uh, i will be looking out for one myself as well great kit i would happily build it again so there we go two parts finished in a week shows you how much i enjoyed it and this is up there with one of those mojo boosting kits that just gives you a good kickstart and eager to model again i've done some quite complicated kits over the last 12 months and that's nice simple kit to uh start the new year and that's the first one of the year we finished so great kit good result very happy with that so there we are so what's next don't know i'm gonna have to do a bench update in a couple of days because we've got mclaren to talk about this to talk about a few different things to talk about so i'll have a think and i'll post on facebook so if you're on my paul ism page or your ism facebook you'll see it and if not stay tuned for the bench update and i'll cover it in that so there we are what we're we going to pick next got a few ideas not quite sure yet but i'll report back at a later date there we are so as usual before you all go stay till the end um if you want to support the channel there's a patreon me, pay, patreon me link a paypal me link and a buy me a coffee link in the description down below any and all support is greatly appreciated and that support is what keeps these videos coming go visit ism facebook page and forum umpretail.com we can get a lot of products i use in my videos my Paul ISM modeling page where all my updates are shared as well as bigger pictures of this as well. Um, the ISM Live the Bench page, Offer Hangout Group and Group Build page and my other Paul ISM Live the Bench page where I do daily hangouts nearly every day of the week including a late night one this Wednesday coming up which we're going to do from 7pm UK time. So there we are. So question because that's why I told you to hang around. What kit have you built that's just been an absolute joy to build no matter what genre what have you built that just fell together or you just thoroughly enjoyed over the years? This one's up there. We're probably one of my most favourite, as well as a few aircraft over the years. Um, some of the 40 scale Mustangs I've done from Tammy and Hasegawa. Um, just wonderful kits. I think one of my most enjoyable kits I built over the years was uh, Fix's 40 scale Javelin. That was a great kit. Um, no issues at all on that. A little bit of a fittish on one of the cells, which is easily de dealable with. And just a fantastic looking aircraft as well. So let me know what kits you built before they've either surprised you or you've just thoroughly enjoyed. And there we are. Thanks for watching today. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Click the thumbs up or thumbs down. Click that bell notification to get notified of all our latest videos. And leave a comment down below. Love all your comments. It's what drives me on in the videos. And uh, I will see you all next time. So take care, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your night. Bye-bye.